Shalom Yasharala. It's the brother Bana Meth back again with a short lesson. Hopefully through the Holy Spirit. It's edifying to you brothers and sisters out there. But first and foremost, before we start, I'd like to give all praises to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rukakadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who rule well and teach well and have taught this truth in 100% to us younger brothers. And shalom, peace and blessings to the whole free elect laboring in this truth and coming back to the obedience of the scriptures. I just want to uh, make this a shorter lesson here. I wanted to uh, encourage you brothers and sisters out here laboring in this truth to continue during these latter days without any fear because we know that the way this devil is moving he he knows that this is the final push you know he's he's been in coming after people's jobs people's ability to live the lifestyles that they've been accustomed to for so long chasing after the lust of this carnal life but this devil has deceived so many already he knows that he needs to make his final push to come after those who aren't going to aren't going to take that stamp into this transition see there's already been the fork in the road and we're at this point where things are really about to take off and we see what what side that everyone's on right now you know people are showing what they truly treasure in their hearts we know that this remnant is a small strong remnant and we've got to pray to endure it during these times so without further ado i'm going to start with the psalm here chapter 25 psalm of david reads unto thee o lord do i lift up my soul O my power i trust in thee let me not be ashamed let not mine enemies triumph over me ye let none that wait on thee be ashamed let them be ashamed with which transgress without cause. And that's what we see right now. All these unrighteous decrees. We've seen all this new legislature and, and we're seeing we're seeing Congress push and lobby for for these businesses to really lay the hammer down before before martial law kicks off and before for the the boots hit the ground so to speak and they really start forcing the hand here but we're not going to be ashamed you know we're not going to be ashamed we're going to stand we're going to take that stand and we're going to pray that the lord covers us and no matter what we know that we have faith in the lord that whatever happens to us be in the name of Yahweh Bashem Yahusha. And continue of line four reads, Show me thy ways, O Lord, teach me my paths, lead me in thy truth, and teach me, for thou art the power of my salvation. On thee do I wait all day. And that's the only comfort you're gonna find. You're not gonna find it anywhere else. And that's why we stay diligent. And every day we have to incorporate the lessons and the scriptures and you know the water to all the the Akim out there that are that are pushing this truth out there and making lessons every day and setting up camp because now is the time to to do these works for the Lord before them before the famine of the word hits. I'm going to read at verse 5. Lead me in thy truth and teach me, for thou art 
the power of my salvation on thee do I wait all the day. Remember, O Lord, thy tender mercies and thy loving kindnesses, for they have been ever of old. Remember not the sins of my youth, nor my transgressions. According to thy mercy, remember me for thy goodness sake, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord, therefore he will teach sinners in the way. The meek will he guide in judgment, and the meek will he teach his way. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth unto such as keep his covenant and his testimonies. For thy name's sake, O Lord, pardon my iniquity, for it is great. What man is he that feareth the Lord? Him shall he teach in the way that he shall choose. His soul shall dwell at ease, and his seed shall inherit the earth. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him, and he will show them his covenant. My eyes are ever toward the Lord, for he shall pluck my feet out of the net. And they're, they're casting all types of traps and nets out there for us right now. But we pray that the Lord will, will keep us out. Keep us out the trap. It says, turn thee unto me and have mercy upon me, for I am desolate and afflicted. The troubles of my heart are enlarged. Oh, bring me out of my distresses. You know, a large part of that. It's coming down to family and friends and coming, you know, households being divided and against each other. And we have to pray on the Lord to, to ease our stresses and we have to put away our, our carnal thoughts and our worries. I'll read at 17, 18, it's lucky. Look upon my affliction and my pain, and forgive all my sins. Consider mine enemies, for they are many, and they hate me with cruel hatred. It's, oh, keep my soul and deliver me. Let me not be ashamed, for I put my trust in thee. Yeah, we're doing that right now. We're realizing that this whole world is coming against us. And it's only going to increase due to the propaganda, due to the due to the whole ability for these the wicked to to continue their ways. They're going to they're going to see any form of righteousness as the enemy. But we, we shall not be ashamed, for we trust in the Lord. It says, Let integrity and upright, uprightness preserve me, for I wait on thee. Redeem Israel, O power, out of all his troubles. So, all his brothers from the tribes, you know, Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, will be our Redeemer, and we. We have to put all our faith in him and wait on him. And we will not be ashamed. Now this is part of our job here. And we have to be willing to make any, any sacrifices and the ultimate sacrifice as Yahweh Shai suffered and sacrificed. We have to keep that same mindset we don't know what what the Lord has in store for each of us, but you know, we pray that that the Lord will, will cover us. I have a reading here from Ezekiel 33 and 7, and it reads, So thou, O son of man, I have set thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore thou shalt hear the word at my mouth, and warn them from me. And... That's our job. And, you know, through the Holy Spirit, the brothers from Great Millstone have been able to teach us younger brothers this truth in 100%, able to wake up the hopefully elect and come back to our heritage. And it's our job to be out there on the highways and byways and, and 
putting out this word through these lessons and to warn our people of what's to come. And this is truly a blessing to, to have this truth. So for the brothers out there that have been blessed to be in this, there's no, there's no looking back. We've been, you know, we used to be dead before this, you know, just bones. But now we seek the true life and eternity through Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. Says Isaiah 62, verse 6 reads, I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day nor night. Ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silence and give him no rest till he establish and till he make Jerusalem a praise in the earth. That's right. We're, we're out there. We're out there, you know, giving this word and preaching this truth and we're going to rebuke all wickedness especially those that are from the 12 tribes we're going to definitely try to teach our brothers and sisters the way and I'm not going to hold our peace because we see wickedness is overtook in this this whole world just like in Sodom and Gomorrah and in Babylon, and we're not going to hold our silence because Yahweh Bashem Yahushai has given us the spirit to, to understand this mystery and to, and to rebuke all evil. You know, that's our job, and we're going to continue. This is more important than any pain job or any type of any type of job that you know that people think that gives them longevity because that could be taken away at any time from Esau so really you don't have any power or control so we need to put our faith and our trust in the the highest power the most high Yahweh because once you put your faith in him you know that that is truly the the key to your salvation. Trusting in Yahweh Shai, knowing that these works go go to the Lord, and He He sees, He knows our works. So let's serve the Lord, and we serve not in vain. I have a reading here from 2nd Ezra chapter 6. I'll begin at chapter 5. And it, uh, it's lucky. It's 2nd Ezra chapter 6, uh, verse 5 here. And it reads, And ere the present years were sought out, and or ever the inventions of them that now sin were turned, before they were sealed, they have gathered faith for a treasure. Then did I consider these things, and they all were made through me alone, and through none other. By me also they be ended, and by no other. The Lord controls it all, the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. And he knows Esau's inventions, he knows all the sin, everything. Everything that this world treasures. We continue at seven. And it reads, Then answered I and said, What shall the parting asunder of the times? Or when shall the end of the first and the beginning of it that followeth? So what shall be the sign there? <clears throat> and he said unto me, From Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the heel of Esau, for Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. Since the hand of man is betwe between the heel and the hand. Other question, Ezra asked thou not. 
I answered, then I said, O Lord, that bearest rule, if I have found favor in thy sight, I beseech thee, show thy servant the end of thy tokens, whereof thou showed, thou showedest me part the last night. So he's he's telling Ezra, this is prophecy, that Esau, Edom, the white man, it's the end of this world. He's destroying it, and we know that Jacob, the patriarch, the father of twelve tribes, the blessing runs through Jacob, and we will be the world that follows the world. Kingdom through Yahweh Shai, righteousness. That's going to be the beginning of the kingdom there. And that's what we seek through the salvation of Yahweh Shai. And that's what we repent for every day. And we're coming back to our heritage. Continue at a Verse 13 here reads, So he answered and said unto me, Stand up upon thy feet and hear a mighty sounding voice, and it shall be as if it were a great motion. But the place where thou standest shall not be moved, and therefore when it speaketh, be not afraid, for the word is of the end, and the foundation of the earth is understood. And why? Because the speech of these things trembleth, and is moved, for it knoweth that these the end of these things must be changed. And it happened that when I heard it, I stood upon my feet and hearkened, and behold, there was a voice that spake, and the sound of it was like the sound of many waters. And it said, Behold, the days come that I begin to draw nigh and to visit them that dwell upon the earth, and will make and will begin to make inquisition of them what they have what they be that have hurt unjustly with their unrighteousness and when the affliction of Sion shall be fulfilled so he's going to make an inquisition of us he's going to judge us test us see our works 20 reads and when the world that shall begin to vanish away shall be finished then will i show these tokens the books shall be opened before the firmament and they shall see all together you know that's referring to the book of life you know, we want to be written in there our names and our works to be part of that that elect the 144,000 and we hope to stand on our works while we have this time now. Because we're seeing the world's vanishing away fast. And the Lord is drawing near. It says, and the children of, the, of a year old shall speak with their voices. The women with child shall bring forth untimely children of three or four months old. And they shall live and be raised up. And suddenly shall Salakia. And suddenly shall the sown places appear unsown. The full storehouses shall suddenly be found empty, and the trumpet shall give a sound, which when every man heareth, then they shall be suddenly afraid. And that's talking about women having untimely children you know you see a lot of people getting married still or trying to continue these things just like in the days of Noah surrounded by this wickedness still trying to plan a future of a thousand years or hundred you know they think that it's, it's going to just continue with this wickedness ruling the world but we know that Esau's end is near. And we're seeing, and it reads that, you know, untimely children of three or four months old, they're going to be raised up, meaning that they're going to pass. 
They're going to be raised up unto the Lord. Because life is going to be tough out there. The stores are going to be empty. Every man is going to be afraid. And we're seeing South Africa being hit. We're seeing them control the, the supply chain here in, in the U.S. We're seeing meat being off the shelves, prices going up, inflation. You know, it's all being controlled by, by these elite bankers. It says, at the time shall friends fight against another like enemies, and the earth shall stand in fear with those that dwell therein. The springs of the fountains shall stand still, and in three hours they shall not run. Whosoever remaineth from all these things that I have told thee shall escape and see my salvation at the end of your world. And the men that are received shall see it, who have not tasted death from their birth. And the heart of the inhabitants shall be changed and turned into another meaning. Which is referring to the spiritual power. You know, having having these laws and the testament written in us. You know, you know hopefully, you know, we pray to be the hopeful elect. But, you know, that's a, if you read about that again in 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. But there shall be men who will escape these days, the, the 144,000, and there will be men that shall not see death. And they're going to be given spiritual power to fight and destroy this wickedness. You know, when those, when those nukes are dropping, the Lord's going to raise up those elect and grant them that power to help his chariots and the angels and help Yahweh Shai. how shy established righteousness here in the new kingdom God destroy the wicked first all these space force militaries all that Esau could spend as much money as he wants trying to invest in those things because the Lord the Lord lets him do it the Lord is giving him that power to because he knows the the ego of that man the pride and the Lord will have pleasure and the hopeful elect are going to have pleasure in destroying them. It says, Whosoever remaineth from all these things that I have told thee shall escape and see my salvation at the end of the year world. And the men that are... Oh, Salakia, yeah, I read this one. Start at 27 here. For evil shall be put out and deceit shall be quenched as for faith, it shall flourish, corruption shall be overcome, and the truth which had been so long without fruit shall be declared. That's a beautiful thing. Because in this wicked world, Esau's kingdom here, you get rewarded for evil, for destroying your people, for leading them into captivity. And the Lord's about to cut off all all trees that that reap bad fruit going to cut them off and and righteousness shall be rewarded and, and you're going to see all these people that are lost that are just gone and they're going to they're going to despise the men of the Lord the hopeful elect but there's going to come a day where they're going to realize who the Lord's dealing with. And they're going to be ashamed and they're going to try to run back because they're going to need leadership. And so a lot of them are going to be destroyed, but Lord willing... Lord willing, we'll be able to have many of our loved ones come back in the kingdom, reborn, 
with righteousness. We continue at 29 and it reads, And when he talked with me, behold, I looked by little and little upon him before whom I stood. And these words said he unto me, I am come to show thee the time of the night to come. If thou wilt pray more and fast seven days again, I shall tell thee greater things by day than I have heard. For thy voice is heard before the Most High, for the mighty hath seen thy righteous dealing. He hath seen also thy chastity, which thou hast had ever since thy youth. And therefore he hath sent me to show thee all these things, and to say unto me, unto thee, be of good comfort, and fear not, and hasten not with the times that are past, to think vain things, that thou mayest not hasten from the latter times. And we have to focus our mind on these latter days, and we have to put away our our regrets and our remorse and we have to ask for that repentance but we have to we have to put those times past when we were living in that in living in this world you know because we're not of this world those that are in this spirit those that have been blessed to wake up to the truth so we must focus on the latter days and hasten the coming of Yahweh <clears throat> I want to take it to a uh, reading here, chapter 23 of the book of Ecclesiasticus. And it reads, O Lord, Father and Governor of all my whole life, leave me not to their counsels and let me not fall by them. Who will set scourges over my thoughts and the discipline of wisdom over mine heart, that they spare me not for mine in ignorances and it pass not by my sins let mine ignorances increase and my sins abound to my destruction and i fall before mine adversaries and mine enemy rejoice over me whose hope is far from thy mercy and for for all them the, taking the stamp and falling into the trap you know, i'm so focused on self-preservation know that that poison once it's activated once once the devil really starts making his move we're gonna we're gonna see a lot of these people dropping there's gonna be a lot of dead out in the streets even reads in the scriptures but they put their trust in in Esau they're so quick to trust anything that the white man says they're so called scientists but they don't believe in the words Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai you know our true power in the beginning and the end of everything and for that we're, we're being led to life well the opposite are being led to death. And Esau has much pleasure in that because that's it's been his spirit for since the beginning. He's always hated the children of Israel. So why would we trust him now? After all the atrocities and all the crimes against humanity, why would we trust Esau to have any mercy over us or try to help us at all. Know your enemy. We have a reading here. Continue at verse 4. O Lord, Father, and power of my life, give me not a proud look, but turn away from thy servants always a haughty mind. So keep us from, from those thoughts. Turn away from me vain hopes and concupiscence, and thou shalt hold him 
up that is desirous always to serve thee. Um, let's uh, look up the definition. So. Concupiscence. Concupiscence. That reads as strong desire, lust, sexual desire. So we're praying that the Lord keeps us from those things, from these vain things. Just let me, let not the greediness of the belly nor the lust of the flesh take hold of me and give not over me thy servant to an impudent mind. And impudent here meaning not showing respect for another person. And brazen, cocky, bold, shameless. And that's begun to, to be part of the culture here, especially in this Western world. And there's no accountability. You know, Esau has taught people that they can do whatever they want and have no shame because all wickedness is accepted here. But that ain't, that's not the way. And the Lord's going to judge. It says, Hear, O ye children, the discipline of the mouth. He that keepeth it shall never be taken in his lips. The sinner shall be left in his foolishness. Both the evil speaker and the proud shall fall thereby. Accustom not thy mouth to swearing. Neither use thyself to the naming of the Holy One. So we don't use the Lord's name in vain. For a servant that is continually beaten shall not be without a blue mark. So he that sweareth and nameth God power continually shall not be faultless. A man that useth much swearing shall be filled with iniquity. And the plague shall never depart from his house. If he shall offend, his sin shall be upon him. And if he acknowledge not his sin, he make a double offense. And if he swear in vain, he shall not be innocent, but his house shall be full of calamities. And you see, this is generational. This is being passed down to our children. And children is being led to folly and continues, you know. Says there is a word that is clothed about with death. Yahweh grant that it be not found in the heritage of Jacob, for all such things shall be far from the godly, and they shall not wallow in their sins. Use not thy mouth to intemperate swearing, for therein is the word of sin. So intemperate. So showing lack of self-control, excessive. Our people have no discipline. That's why we're so stubborn to, to follow the, the laws and the doctrine of the, of the Lord. They can't even put away abominable foods. You know, they can't, they, they don't keep the Sabbaths, you know, all these things that the Lord asked, they don't want to do, but you got so many of these people that still want to call on the Lord or, or say they are men of the Lord, but they do none of these things. They don't show those works. Continue at 14 reads, remember thy father and thy mother when thou sittest among great men be not forgetful of before them, and so thou by thy custom become a fool, and wish that thou had not been born, and cursed the day of thy nativity. And that's it's part of that brainwashing that Esau tries to do to destroy our cultures, where a lot of families are try to adapt to this Western culture and 
and the ways of Esau and the ways that are projected on us by this devil through, through all types of factors, music, entertainment, celebrities, um, just you name it. And our people, they, they become shameful of, of their true heritage of where they, they come from and they try to adapt a new name, this Western ideology and culture which was never ours. And they try to create names for it, call it, call it black culture or Latino culture. And these things these things weren't our culture, they're not part of our heritage. It says, the man that is accustomed to opprobrious words will never be reformed all the days of his life. So don't get accustomed to this, these types of words and, and just spewing out wickedness out of your mouth and and cursing righteousness in the Lord. You know, we don't even deal with people like that because we know that they're just gone. They're a waste of time. They'll never re be reformed all the days of their life. Two sorts of men multiply sin and the third will bring wrath. A hot mind is as a burning fire. It shall never be quenched till it be consumed by death. A fornicator is the body of his flesh. Will never see. Salakia. A fornicator in the body of his flesh will never cease till he hath kindled a fire. They just love destruction, right? says, all bread is sweet to a whoremonger. He will not leave off till he die. A man that breaketh wedlock, saying thus in his heart, who seeth me? I am compassed about with darkness. The walls cover me and nobody seeth me. What need I to fear? The Most High will not remember my sins. Such a man only feareth the eyes of men and knoweth not that the eyes of the Lord are 10,000 times brighter than the sun, beholding all the ways of man and considering the most secret parts. The Lord sees all. The Lord knows your iniquities. And that's the ultimate judge, the only one that you should fear. So keep his ways. He knew all things er ever they were created. And so also after they were perfected, he looked upon them all. This man shall be punished in the streets of the city, and where he suspecteth not, he shall be taken. Thus shall it go also with the wife that leaveth her husband, and bringeth in another heir by another. First, she hath disobeyed the law of the Most High. You know, a woman can't leave her husband. You know, the only time is through death. If her husband passes. And we know the punishment for adultery is death also for the for the wife and the other man it says uh, she hath trespassed against her own husband and thirdly she hath played the whore in adultery and brought children by another man she shall be brought out into the congregation and inquisition shall be made of her children her children shall not take root and her branches shall be shall bring forth no fruit she shall leave her memory to be cursed and her reproach shall not be blotted out and they that remain shall know that there is nothing better than the fear of the lord and that there is nothing sweeter than to take heed unto the commandments of the lord it is great glory to follow the lord and to be received of him is long life that's what these this doctrine is for and the lord wants to 
give you a long life, give you the keys to righteousness and salvation. So that's why we got to stay diligent in our studies to know the laws, to try to follow and please the Lord. But reading from Proverbs chapter 1 here, I'm going to begin at verse 5. It reads, A wise man will hear and will increase learning, and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. To understand a proverb and the interpretation, the words of the wise in their dark sayings. So you have to be able to break these, these words down, these parables. Um, that's why we seek the counsel of our elders and brothers that have been in this truth longer than us. Because we're not perfect and we could always learn from our fellow brethren and sisters. It says, uh, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despite wisdom and instruction. My son, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother, for that they shall be an ornament of grace unto thy head, and chains about thy neck. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. If they say, Come with us, let us lay wait for blood, let us lurk privately for the innocent without cause. Let them swallow them up, alive as the grave and whole as those that go down into the pit we shall find a precious substance we shall fill our houses with spoil so yeah I'm always praying on on the innocent praying on any type of weaker nation and that's that's what Esau's always built his riches off of rape rob and pillage so we're not gonna we're not gonna reap reap any type of benefits from wicked doings. It says cast in thy lot among us, let us all have one purse. My son, walk not thou in the way with them, refrain thy foot from their path. For their feet run to evil and make haste to shed blood. Surely in vain the net is spread in the sight of any bird. And they that lay wait for their own blood, they lurk privately for their own lives. So are the ways of everyone that is greedy of gain, which taketh away the life of the owners thereof. Wisdom crieth without, she uttereth her voice in the streets. She crieth in the chief place of concourse, in the openings of the gates. In the city she uttereth her words, saying, How long, ye simple ones, will you love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. Yeah, and we see the fools... They think they know it all. They don't want to hear it. And they, they just love simple-mindedness. They have no knowledge of the Father or the Messiah. And they're going to be... They're going to be led to death, ultimately. Because I have called and you refused I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded but ye have set at not all my counsel and would not would none at my reproof I also will laugh at your calamity I will mock when you when your fear cometh when your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind when distress and anguish cometh upon you then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. For that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. They would none of my counsel. They despised all my reproof. Therefore, 
they shall eat of the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. But whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely, and shall be quiet from fear of evil. So the Lord, the Lord is places stumbling blocks upon you. He he sends the prophets out there. He if if you've been blessed to hear this truth at all, the Lord has sent you warnings. He, the Lord many times has placed stumbling blocks and for our people if they're not going to wake up and realize that the Lord is is putting a sign there and they're going and if you keep continuing in your own error and your own wickedness the Lord's going to have pleasure when you're when you're in calamity and, and when your destruction comes because you chose that route. You didn't want to listen to the Lord when he gave you many warnings and his prophets. So therefore, your latter days are going to be they're going to be rough because you're not going to have the spirit of the Lord with you. Of a reading here from Ecclesiasticus chapter 18. I'll start at 27 and reads, A wise man will fear in everything, and in the day of sinning he will become, he will beware of offense, but a fool will not observe time. Every man of understanding knoweth wisdom, and he will give praise unto him that found her. They that were of understanding and sayings become also wise themselves and poured forth exquisite parables. Go not after thy lusts, but refrain thyself from thine appetites. If thou givest thy soul the desires that please her, she will make thee a laughing stock to thine enemies that malign thee. Your enemies always set in those traps for you. It says, take not pleasure in much good cheer, neither be tied to the expense thereof. So everything comes at a cost. All those carnal lusts, all those things, adultery, all this wickedness, chasing after your own pleasure, that's death. You know, and we give praise unto the wise leaders and elders and apostles, great millstone, for teaching us this truth, and the men of wisdom. But reading here from uh, Jeremiah, this is one and five, reads, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee, and before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and I ordain thee a prophet unto the nations. So the Lord has chosen his elect. He's given them the spirit of truth. And the Lord has chosen them to, to be the light into this wicked times and this darkness and to to wake our people up to this truth in the latter days. That way the Lord can call upon his, his remnant before the destruction. But he has chosen each of his men, all the prophets, before he even formed thee. You know, some of these prophets, you know, they're probably, they've always been the prophets, even back in the ancient times. You know, it's just reincarnated over and over. This is a reading from John chapter 15. I'm going to close here. It's a beautiful, beautiful chapter here. 
It reads, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. So yeah, the Lord, the Lord is the, is the, we're the bride, you know, Israel is the bride. And the Father, the Most High, he's the, he's the, the husbandman we need to obey and we need to hearken 100 percent 100 percent truth from the lord and we can't break any of of his his laws or or any of the ways that he he set out for us to keep and yahweh shai being the true vine will be our salvation the connector I mean, saying that you know every every branch that that bears good fruit is going to bring more. It says, "Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine, no more can ye except ye abide in me. So we have to follow Yahweh Shai." through the vine to get to the Father. It says, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For ye, for without me ye can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered. And men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. And that's Yahweh Shai speaking here to the Apostle John. It says, Herein is my Father glorified. It's reading that verse 9 here. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. How shy he laid down his life for our people. In these latter days here, we have to be willing to make the same type of sacrifices Yahweh Shai made for us. The Lord loves us. We are his friends. He's chosen us. It says, Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. That's right. The servants, they just take orders, but we're friends of Yahweh Shai because he has made everything known to us and what the Father requires of us and asks of us. The great mysteries. It says, Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit, that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. He may give it you. That's why we pray in the name of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. That is our power. It says, These things I command you that ye love one another. If the world hates you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because 
you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Remember the word that I sent unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will also keep yours also. So those believers, they will also believe in the words that we share. But we know that most of the, the world is going gonna, is gonna to come after the believers of Yahweh Shai. Because they don't want to face judgment. They know that their wickedness is going to come to an end. And the party's over. We continue at a 21 here. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had, they had not had sin, but now they have no cloak for their sin. He hateth me that, he that hateth me hateth my father also. If I had not done among them the works which no other man did, they had not, they had not had sin. But now they have both seen and hated both me and my father. And yeah, that's why we strive to perfect ourselves as like Yahweh Shai. You know, and even though it's we're in this carnal flesh, we're not able to. We strive to and we try our best. And we ask for forgiveness for for, for our errors, because we're not perfect. But Yahweh Shai, he, he served as the example of the way to be. It says, but this cometh to pass that the world, that the word might be fulfilled that is written in their law. They hated me without a cause. But when the comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the father, even the spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the father, he shall testify of me, and ye also shall bear witness, because ye have been with me from the beginning. Mm -hmm. So we're going to pray to to see those latter days and to, to be part of the 144,000, the remnant that the Lord, Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai, has, has saved from the beginning we we're praying on the great comforter every day because we need we need we need his spiritual power we need his support and we need only him only he can can make right so for all you brothers and sisters out there Hopefully it's been a edifying lesson through the Holy Spirit. I just want to say continue to to pray in the name of Yahweh, Bashem Yahweh Shai, each day to to keep your spirit strong, to keep pushing until we get out of here. May the kingdom come soon. So I'll end it there. Shalom to you brothers and sisters. Keep laboring in this truth. The water.